Pirkei Oves, chapter 4, Mishnah 1. Yesterday we spoke about, if you remember, we spoke about the wise. Who is a wise? Someone who learns from everyone. And uh, we elaborated a little bit. We said uh, the Rebbe's idea. We spoke about the Rebbe, what the Rebbe says, that a wise man, he knows the upsides, upsides and the deficiencies of everything he saws. He sees the whole picture. And uh, a real wise, although he knows all the flaws of the other, yet he can take a lesson from him and advice. And that, that is the real, real wise. And then we move forward to the hero, someone, someone who can um, conquer his own bad inclination, someone who can refrain himself. Um, we also elaborated a little bit. We said that we have the nature, every person has his own nature. And to overcome your own nature, that is the hardest thing. And um, especially if someone has the, the nature to go out and fight and to conquer, and he refrains that nature of his, um, that is even greater than actually conquering a whole city. This is important. Now let's move on to the next segment of, uh, of the Mishnah. Who is a rich, someone who is happy with what, it, what he got. And um, the Rebbe says that normally it says in the Gemara, in, in what book is it in the, in the Gemara? In the, oh yeah, it's, it's in the Kohelet Rabba. Everybody knows Kohelet Rabba, Midrash Rabba, Medrash. It says, Someone who has a money wants to have two money. One hundred. Someone who has one hundred dollars, he wants to have. He wants to have two hundred. And if he has two hundred, he wants to have four hundred. This is basic nature of every person, every individual. Uh, but a real wealthy human being, he has so much. He's, he has a peaceful mind. And um, he's, he's the real rich. Someone who has a peaceful mind, he knows he has all he needs, and he doesn't have this passion to chase after greater uh, wealth. He's the real rich. Um, the next segment of this Mishnah, which is, you, did you say it? Yes, this is like one of the straightforward. Yes, yeah, it's, it's straightforward, but there must be some good stuff about it. Yeah, and I gotta tell you, when you learn Perik uh, I think Yonah said that every, every time we, we get to a new Mishnah, I say, oh, this one is one of my favorites. The Perik is like each Mishnah is, is the, the, the top <laughs> of, of uh, men's uh, wisdom. So this, the next segment in chapter 4, Mishnah 1, Hezeo um, Mechubo de Sabriois, who is dignified? Someone who dignifies others. Now, the Mishnah is using um, a specific term. Um, someone who honors the Briois. What is Briois? Anybody knows? Bria? The creation. Okay, it doesn't say, the Mishnah could say, who is dignified? Someone who dignifies all the people. But, but it doesn't say so. The Mishnah says, someone who honors all the creations, every, every, every person on the planet, um, it doesn't matter if he's a wise, sophisticated person, rich, poor, and so forth, he honors everyone. And it's, it's a very specific word, briois. Um, what it says here, Because when you, when you think of Hashem, God Almighty, He, obviously, comparing to Him, all the creations are not too substantial, right? I mean, Hashem is the absolute perfection, the absolute... 
Huh? He made it. He made the concept of perfection even. He says compared God to create the creations. To, he, made the he made the creations, exactly. So even the highest creation of all is okay. nothing, is, is his own uh, handmade. <laughs> so it, it, when you see how Hashem, uh, he honors, um, he honors all the, all, all the, the creations, everything he created, because we said, we know, it says in, in another place, in, in Pirka Ovis, we said that everything Hashem created, remember, he created to his own honor. Remember this, uh, we learn it every now and then in, in Pirka Ovis, it says everything Hashem created in his world, he created it to himself, to his own, own uh, um, honor. A very common use to this idea is uh, gold. Remember we said that uh, the gold was created in the world for base Hamikdash. Okay. okay. Of course, it's from, uh, uh, but, but after, now that Hashem created the gold and there is gold in the world, then people can use it to other uses. But the, the purpose of gold, like any other creation in the universe, is to the honor of Hashem. Um, this is the, you know, the, in the, I believe this Sicha is from the 60s or the 70s, when uh, radio shows started, started to come up uh, in America. Um, I know radio was probably a lot earlier, but Tanya lessons, in, in um, radio Torah lessons were not common at all. Actually, not only they weren't uh, um, common, it was kind of, maybe Mr. Smith, maybe you remember this, that people opposed it. People opposed the idea to broadcast Torah on radio. That's what uh, I was told, I, I, I wasn't alive. In America, I'm talking. Weinberg, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fifties. Okay, I I need I need to look at the date. What, what year is it? Uh, 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 when they were printed, uh, his, uh, his things from the radio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you know the Rebbe used to listen to his lessons on Moitzei Shabbos, I, I believe yeah, 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 it yeah, was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. You know, there is a, a very famous Lessons in Tanya. Yeah. There's a series of four volumes. Six, Five volumes. I think it's... Uh, oh, it could be. I, I, it's four. You have the t two first volumes are Likute Amorim, then you have Shai Chud Muna. I believe it's four volumes. It could be either four or five. In the end of, of, of this book, I think it's in there. No, it's a Tanya over here. Over here, what? No, no, no. We, we, we don't have lessons in time. I don't think they added. Uh, could be. I'm sure it's on the Chabad website. Lessons in Tanya? Yeah. Could be. Yeah, it should be. It's, this is, uh, you, you know, when people are looking for a good source to learn Tanya from, with a good commentary, so this is the only commentary you can really rely on and say the Lubavitcher Rebbe himself approved this commentary. The Lessons in Tanya, the, he entered the, the, the scripts, the, the scripts of the radio shows to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe would correct them or change them. Yeah. This is lessons, lessons in Tanya. Um, but that was a novelty. That, that's what was my point. It was a novelty. People opposed the idea to broadcast Torah lessons. Then, and there, then the famous Sikh of the Rebbe came 
about how Hashem, everything He created in His world, He created to His own honor with the famous example of Beis Amigdash and gold. Hashem created gold and the Medrash, Midrash Rabbah says, all the gold in the world was created first to, for Beis Amigdash. Now that it is found in the world, so people will use it to, for jewelry and, and more things. That was the whole point. So also radio, the, the whole concept of radio is, was invented, is in the world to the honor of Hashem. So people will use it to broadcast Torah lessons and to spread the godliness and Yiddishkeit in, in the world. And that, so you're saying it was in the 50s, 1950s. Were yeah. Was broadcast on the radio in the 60s and 70s also? Could be, could be, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. It, it, it went on for several years. Oh, yeah. Why, do you remember yeah, listening I, I to never, it? I never remember hearing anything like this on the radio. Well, no. Unless you uh, uh, turned on the... Tuned the in. Right, the, yeah. the right station. I think they had WEBD, which is the Jewish station. Okay. Uh, it was WLCC also. <laughs> and anyhow, so. It's going back a long time. <laughs> I, but you know, later on, uh, Chabad had their own uh, cables uh, yeah, channel, yeah, yeah. and the Rebbe's for Bregen, that were not on Shabbos and holiday, were also uh, broadcasted, broadcasted uh, all, all, all around the world. All around the world, and especially in America, I know. I know because I heard from people that they used to, you know, watch a game, and in the commercial break, they would, you know, just flip to another channel, and all of a sudden they saw, "What is this? Who is this man?" And there are s some famous stories. There's a famous story with the with the woman that the Rebbe told her to lock her car door. She was basically. That, that's what I heard, that's the story. One, one day, a woman that was not Jewish, um, she entered the 770, and she said, I'd like to meet, I'd like to thank the, the, this man, the, your, your rabbi, I'd like to thank him. And they, they said, they asked her, what, what, what is it about? So she said, your rabbi saved me. I was almost robbed uh, when I was in my car. Uh, I was sitting in my car, and the car next to me was your r rabbi, which I didn't know he was your rabbi back then. Uh, he, he pointed at my button, at the button. You remember, cars had buttons like standing out. So he told me to close it. And I closed it. The next traffic light, someone tried to open my door, and I had the time to, to, to run away. <laughs> so I just came here to, to, and she donated money to Chabad. It's a famous story. It, that was before the Rebbe's medal the gold medal of, of Congress <laughs> that let him drive without <laughs> stopping the traffic light. But basically, that's a famous story. So the whole idea of cable TV is also for Hashem, to the honor of Hashem. And that is done by us broadcasting the Rebbe's for bringings and Rebbe's lessons, teachings. I, I met a Jew, a relative of mine, as a, fact, um, as a matter of fact, and he told me, he, he's not a Chabad Chosid, but he told me that he, he used to just look at the Rebbe's talking on, on TV, uh, although he, he doesn't know, he doesn't talk Yiddish, my, my relative, but, but he, he said, you know, I just, I don't know, there was something about it. I just enjoyed looking at, at him and listening to him. We, the way he talks, the way, and there was nothing really interesting in those videos because the Rebbe would just sit and talk Yiddish for, for hours. Sometimes you see the crowd or the people behind him. Sometimes they sing a, a tune. But the, but he, he said, I just enjoyed watching. Just think how many people. So anyhow, that lady, he, she recognized the Rebbe on TV, that's how she knew who the Rebbe was to come and thank him. Uh, uh, so everything Hashem creates in His world, He creates to His own honor. And um, um, so we see that ev every creation in the universe 
honors Hashem and Hashem honors it um, back, obviously. So if Hashem, the Creator, can honor and respect creations which are incomparably uh, distant from Hashem, um, inferior to Hashem, it's, you can't even compare the Creator from the creations, but yet Hashem respects and honors all the creations, how much more so should we honor and respect all the creations? Every person you see, as low as he might be. They say that Mashiach, it says in the Yom Yom, the book of Yom Yom, it says, are you following by the way? Going too fast? A little bit. Okay. Um, in the Yom Yom it says that Mashiach, one of the great things about Mashiach, that he'll, as genius as he should be, he will still sit down with average people and below average people to learn Torah with, with them. That's what, in the Yom Yom, that's what it says. He, he will learn Torah with uh, Avraham, Yitzchok, Yaakov, the forefathers of the <laughs> Jewish na nations, and yet he will still have the uh, humility, the, the humbleness to sit down with just random people, simple Jews, 